Welcome back to Midweek here at the church today. We are coming off of a fantastic Sunday. And I want to first off say thank you for every single one that uh, came. Some uh, volunteered. We couldn't have done it without you. Thank you for your service. Um, And then thank you for being faithful online. Those that are still with us online, God bless you. Uh, You matter. You're just as important as everybody um, else. And we're so thankful that we are still together. We did have a fantastic time on Sunday. It was very different. We had two services. And I will remind you that is the schedule that we are going to continue to keep. And we feel like that if we can keep up our recommendations and our guidelines and our safety procedures, that uh, we can reduce as much as possible Uh, We can just reduce anything that might cause uh, alarm. And so thank you for being faithful. Praise God. We had a great service. Uh, First service was fantastic, and second service was equal to that. So again, thank you for being a part of that on Sunday. Midweek, we are going to keep our services midweek online. And we're going to do this at least, and I will say at least, until uh, the, the month of June. And we will evaluate uh, what the uh, current situation looks like um, towards the end of this month. And so if you'll work with us, we're doing our best to try to uh, stay as on top of it as we can. And you can imagine how uh, difficult that is in a in an ever fluid uh, moving situation. So you pray with us and for us as we do our best to maintain Uh, uh, just a a wonderful path and a very safe path. And so, praise God. God bless you. We're going to pray right now in Jesus' name, and we're going to ask Him to bless tonight. Uh, We've been hearing some positive reports of some that have been affected by uh, the virus, and God is moving, and I won't give that out publicly, uh, but I just want to let you know that some dire situations have uh, made a turn for the better, and it is astounding the medical field, and we're very thankful your prayers are making a difference. Do not stop praying. Praise God. So let's go in this together, and then we'll look at the content for tonight. I believe you'll enjoy it, and I'm excited about teaching it to you in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your divine presence. You have never left us. You have never forsaken us. You have been an ever-present help in trouble. And we are so thankful. Thankful that we find safety in your presence. We find safety. You are a banner over us. And we glorify the name. You're touching our families. You're moving in our favor. We believe that this is a moment that the church is going to experience its greatest revival. And I am thankful that we are in your kingdom at such a time as this. We pray for this night, the content and the steps that we are taking to uncover what it really means, God, to have the treasure that is the kingdom of God. Everybody said in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So again, midweek, we were Uh, last week discussing some of the content of what the kingdom looks like. And we had to take a pause. uh, And we're going to have to spend some time on some points that we're going to talk about here. And you will, uh, you'll remember as we start refreshing uh, some of these points here. But our theme this year, if you are new to the church today, and you have not been a part of our system, even in the midst of of COVID and, and um, uh, all the changes that have taken place, we still feel like that this is the mandate. And uh, I believe that God is really putting the desire to uncover what the treasure is. And some of that is corporate, and we're going to experience that together. That's exciting. That's super exciting to understand that we're a part of a body and God is going to reveal things to the church today. And I believe in the ministries of the church today that are going to really come to the surface. And uh, I believe in the promises that God has given to us and the promises that are in his word that we are going to experience because we are apostolic people 
and we are people of his name. And so that's exciting to know that there are corporate things that are going to take place. But other than that, there's also going to be individual things, individual treasures that are discovered along the way. And I'm excited about both of these, both corporate as well as individual uh, treasures that are going to be discovered. So if you're new to the church today, we I believe that our mandate this year is to really uncover what the treasure is. And that verse is found in Matthew 13, verse number 44. We read it last week a couple times. We're going to read it again. Amen. If you want, you can read it with me. You'll find it right up here on the screen. It says this, Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hides, and for joy thereof he goes and he sells. That is absolutely incredible that a man upon finding treasure will assess that that is worth more than the sum total of his entire life up until that point. Praise God. We haven't even got to that that yet. But, But realize he goes and he sells all that he has and his only desire is this, I have got to buy the field. Praise God. And we are on a journey ladies and gentlemen, of trying to understand the treasure in which we know that Jesus is saying that the treasure is the kingdom of God. Last week, a couple of reminders here um, that we'll pull back from last week, but last week we, we talked about what the kingdom is. Now that is a very, uh, it's a very deep subject, and, um, and so I, I encourage you to go and study, see what the kingdom of God is. Um, And I promise you it's going to be very beneficial and it's going to bless your life as you start looking at the kingdom of God. I feel like God will start enlightening some things about the kingdom that will really be a blessing to you. But for the sake of uh, just painting a, a picture quickly, here's what the kingdom really is. It is the spiritual realm over which Jesus Christ reigns. And that term reigns as king is, is, um, is, absolutely uh, essential to our understanding. It's not just a realm in which he exists. The, the kingdom of God is just not a realm. It is a realm in which Jesus Christ, uh, he reigns. I was going to say he actually reigns, but he reigns as the king. Jesus Christ is the king, all right? And it is the fulfillment on earth of God's will. And Jesus Uh, He talked about it, the forerunner to Jesus talked about it, and the kingdom was uh, was at hand. Last week we talked about the kingdom was at hand because the king was on hand, and we won't go into that. Uh, You can review last week's content, it's on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll be blessed by that if you want to go and review some of this, but the kingdom is basically the, uh, the spiritual realm over which Jesus Christ reigns as its king, all right? We started by talking about three main points to the treasure. Let's review those quickly. Number one, the treasure will be discovered. It's not just going to happen. You're not just going to find it. It's not going to be something that you just stumble upon. And uh, it's not going to be something that uh, you don't have to put effort into. It's not going to be something that you don't get you don't have to get your hands dirty to find. No, it's quite the opposite of that. The treasure is going to be something in which you will have to put forth effort to discover. And if you're wondering, where do we start? We start with a desire for discovery. That's where we start as a church today. We've got a desire to discover what the treasure really is. And so let's go on a journey. We've got the year. Let's take the time. Let's take the time and let's go on a journey to discover what is the treasure. Let's desire these things from the Lord. And I'm, I'm very thankful. It's amazing that we're going to base an entire year worth of Wednesdays, our entire midweek uh, approach for, for this 2020 year will be the treasure. And we're going to base that out of one solitary verse. Of course, building upon that uh, with other verses in the word of the Lord. But first and foremost, you will never find the treasure if you do not have a desire. And you have to understand that the treasure is going to be discovered. God is, is, is willing to put you in that field. He's willing to put you in proximity. Remember, we talked about that last week. 
that he, he could put you in that proximity, but it's our, it will be our, uh, it will be our efforts. We've got to stay faithful to that field, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Number two, the treasure uh, belongs to the owner of the field. You can't just go and rip this thing from the field underneath the cover of night. That doesn't happen like that. We don't have that opportunity just to set out on a journey. We know and we take for our own and we go on. It doesn't work like that. Um, and, and I'm not going to get off on a rabbit trail for the sake of time. But we, we have got to, uh, this is going to have to be a spiritual, ethical, um, uh, some spiritual eth ethical actions that take place. We, we don't just get to go and steal the treasure. No, the treasure has to be bought. And the Lord was saying that when he said, it's in the field, but the man discovered it. And when the man discovered it, he, hide, he hid it again. And the reason he hid it again is because he realized, I cannot take what does not belong to me. Now, the, uh, the, the price tag is on it. And the price tag was all that he had. The price tag wasn't a, a third or a fifth or whatever. It was all that he had. And so the man knew that it's going to require everything in order for me to buy that. And I understand I have to purchase that because this, thing, this stuff is not given away for free. And I understand salvation is a gift. And thank God because we could not work our way in to these things. We couldn't work our way in to, to eternal life. We cannot do that. But the treasure, the kingdom, and all the kingdom has to offer and those things, the, the spiritual realm in which Jesus Christ reigns uh, on earth, it's going to have to be bought, and it's going to be costly. But here's what I love, and this is the third thing that you'll see, is that it will rearrange our definition of what is really of worth. And I love that. He had absolutely no hesitation when he found that treasure. He said, that right there is well beyond what I already presently own. There is nothing I have on earth that even remotely compares to what I have found in this field. And that is the mentality. That's the game changer right there. When we start figuring out that what we have discovered, oh, it, it is well worth anything that I have to give. It is way beyond anything that I presently own or have ownership over. And I want us as the church today, I want us to, uh, to, to, to evaluate, to weigh, put it on a scale. If, if, you're, if you're wondering right now, I wonder if it's worth it. I wonder if this thing, put it on a scale. Ask God, show me, show me. The Lord was trying to show that rich young ruler and he was trying to, to allow him to see that there is treasure in heaven. And if you, will, if you will put this thing on a scale right now, he weighed him, he tried him right there on the spot. And the man could not, he couldn't put uh, uh, heaven's treasure and earth's treasure on the same scale. He couldn't do it. He, because if he would have, he would have seen heaven's treasure is, is way greater. But he evaluated and said, no, I, I don't want to be a part of that. I, uh, th this, is, this is too much for, or too much to me. It, it, uh, what I have is too much. What I presently own is too much, if you would. We've got to allow the treasure. And when I, I believe, church, when we find this thing, what, what do we mean by, by this? And I don't want to go uh, putting a lot of time into this. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to insinuate that if we will, if we'll evaluate, let's, let's put this into a practical term. If we'll evaluate and we'll say, I wonder if, I wonder if an hour of early morning prayer is greater than an hour of sleep. It's a real simple way of putting something into a practical term. I wonder if, if um, being faithful uh, when, the, when the house of the Lord is open is, is, is greater than, you, you know, you fill in the blank. And if we start uh, desiring the, the treasure, we start seeing it for what it really is, it'll start rearranging our definition of worth. We will start saying, it's greater for me. I've been doing some early morning prayer, and this morning was the, uh, was the most difficult one I've had in the last couple of weeks. And um, when I got up uh, this morning, 
Uh, I, I, I didn't have a, 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 just a really busy day yesterday, and it was later before I even got to bed. I was up really, really early for church, and, and you know how it is. You, you guys do the same thing, and, and so I, I got up. My alarm went off, and I got up, and, and I walked, and I grabbed my phone, and my first, my first waking thought was I would probably be more effective if I spent another hour or two in the bed. And I'll probably have better prayer. I'll still get up before anybody's up. And, and I know the Lord is ever faithful to me. And, and I went as far as resetting my alarm for, uh, I think, a couple hours later. And I was going to go just lay back down because I, I was just exhausted. And, and it was almost, I, I told my wife today, I felt like the Holy Ghost said, you need to pray now. And, and I turned that alarm off and I walked into to my, uh, what would be known as my prayer closet and I began to call out to the Lord. I had to evaluate the worth. I had to evaluate the voice of God. Is it really worth it? And I promise you, it was. He met me there in the sweetest of ways. And so when we start really seeing it, I don't know if he combed his hand through some of those gold pieces. I don't know what kind of treasure was in there, what kind of rings, what kind of uh, you know, jewels did he find in there, what kind of gold, how many gold, I don't know what was in there, what was even insinuated by Jesus Christ in this parable. All I know is that that man looked at it and he said, what's in that box right there that I have just discovered is well worth everything that I own. Amen. So, so paths to, uh, path, the path rather to possession. This is where we're going to spend the remainder of our 10 minutes, the path to possession. There are three things here where I mentioned last week that we're going to spend some time. And I said, we're going to start right here. And it is exactly where we are going to start. We've got to start right here because I believe that these three things are going to be uh, what really sets us in the right, uh, on the right, uh, on the right path. It's going, it's going to put us um, exactly where we need to start going as a body and even uh, individually. We talked about if we're going to possess the treasure, if we're going to possess the kingdom, that's what this was all about. Really, the treasure is the kingdom. And so Jesus was saying that the, uh, the, the, the kingdom is like unto treasure. And, and so when the man possessed the treasure, Jesus was saying he possessed the kingdom. And ultimately, it's not about what we get, all right, as in, uh, the things that the kingdom has to offer, it's that we have now bought into the kingdom. We, ha- we have now ownership of the kingdom. And uh, uh, we've got to possess this. We've got to possess this. Jesus told Nicodemus, you can't even see, nor can you enter unless there is a buying in. There's a path to this thing. And, and here in Matthew 13, the Lord is, is giving us an understanding of how important it is to, uh, to possess this, uh, the, this kingdom. And I believe that there are three things right here that are going to give us an understanding of how to get to where we need to start. The first of those things is what we're going to talk about today. And I believe we'll probably even spend some time on this next Wednesday night, Lord willing. But the first thing is to spend time in the field. There are three things that this man had to do in order to really possess the treasure. The first of which he had to spend time in the field. The second was he not only had to spend time in the field to discover the treasure, there had to be work. And then the third thing, he had to recognize the value of the treasure. Of course, the ultimate thing that he had to go do was he had to go sell all, and that's a whole different concept that we need to take some time and talk about later on in the year if the Lord wills. But the first thing that we're going to talk about tonight is is, um, in getting on this path or the correct path, we need to have spent some time in the field. Allow me uh, to go through this uh, very swiftly in the next seven or eight minutes, and I want to bring your attention to Psalms 90, verse number 12. Remember now, we are talking about spending time in the field. The writer here says, teach us to number our days. Not just give us the number of our days, but teach us to number our days. That is an action there, not just a revelation of how many. And I believe if some of us knew how many that we had, we probably would adjust some things in our life. 
And perhaps this is the motive of the writer in which he says, we need to understand the value of our days. And the, the, the end game is not just to understand the value, but so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And the writer here is saying, please teach us to number our days. Why? Because time is valuable. Time is essential. Time is imperative. And we only are allotted so much and not a single one of us have an understanding uh, 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 to its completion uh, of, of when and where our time is going to be called forth. We know that our life is just a vapor. It's, it's here in a moment. It's gone in the next. It's in the morning we're, we're grass according to the word of God and in the evening we just fade away. Our time is so short. We're promised a certain amount of life as a whole, as humanity, but that does not mean that, uh, you know, something could abruptly uh, end that. As we have seen in the last few months, the tragedy that has struck our world, our nation, our cities, and even some of our families. And so the writer here is saying time is, is essential. We need to understand the value of our time. And so I want to challenge the church about the value of where we spend our time. Jesus, these would be words in red. He says to seek first the kingdom of God. There is a, uh, there is a time principle here. You need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then he says, all these things shall be added unto you. And those things were, were previously discussed. At least the principle of those things were previously discussed. But let's talk, about, let's talk about what it really means. Or let's at least introduce what it really means to, talk, uh, to seek first, excuse me, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Our time, when we're, looking at, when we're looking at the treasure, our time in the field will be directly tethered to our desire to seek first the kingdom of God. We'll spend time in the field if we really are tied to a desire to seek first the kingdom of God. If I'm, if I'm in his field and I find the value and I recognize the value and I purchase that treasure, it's going to be because I have a desire to seek first the kingdom of God. Jesus would say, and we don't have time. We do not have time. But he would say, and, and the, uh, the Gospels would record this, but he would say things like this, that you have to love the Lord your God, not half-heartedly, not when you decide to, not certain hours of the day. In fact, he would say things like this, I want all of you. I, I love, I love the, the concept because, uh, and Mark talks about it, it's, a, it's, a, it's in a later slide, but for the sake of time, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to rush right through this thing, but... But Mark says to love your God, he's recording Jesus with all of your heart, all of your soul, your mind, and your strength. And, and, and that strength is not just talking about your physical being, how much we are able to give him. But rather, it's, it's describing a much deeper understanding, a much deeper level than that. It's talking about our muchness. It's like as if I said very much, not just much, but very much. All, it's not just all, it's your very all. And that, that strength there goes, it ties back into those other three uh, principles. The heart, your very muchness of your heart and your soul, all of your soul. The muchness of your soul and your mind, the muchness of your mind. To its limitations and beyond, as much as you can afford to love him, that is the way that he desires us to love him. And so when we're looking at the kingdom of God, the Lord is saying, I want you to seek me first. How? With, with all of your mind, with all of your heart, with all of your soul. What does that mean? I mean, to its fullest until it, until it's running over until you can give no more. Why? Because our time in the field is going to be tied it's going to be tethered, if you would, to our desire to seek the kingdom of God, but not just to seek it, to seek it properly, and that's to seek it first. We have to 
seek the kingdom of God with everything that is with inside of us. And this is a mandate from the Lord. It's not just, well, I'll, I'll, I'll receive the benefits if I do, or I'm sure there's more benefits to doing this, but rather this is the way that the Lord intended his subjects. We, we might not like that term, but if we're a part of his kingdom, we're a, we're a subject to him. And this is how he wanted his subjects to seek his kingdom. He wanted them to, to go on a journey, but to go on the journey first. I love what, uh, what Pink says right here. He says the, the most deeply motivated people are, are, excuse me, not to mention those who are most productive and satisfied, hitch their desires to a larger cause than themselves. And I wonder what would happen if we hitched our desires and our motives to a larger cause. What if we had kingdom desires? What would happen if we had kingdom desires? What would happen if, if I, I, I don't know if we understand what it really means to be truly productive I'm not talking about just getting things done. I'm talking about things that are going to be remembered in eternity. Works that are going to be allowed to go through those gates. That's productivity to me. That will be what truly satisfies me beyond uh, the realm of what is temporal but eternal, leading into eternity. We must not just seek the kingdom. We've got to seek it first. This is a time thing, but it goes even beyond that. Seeking first the kingdom is not just defined as initial time spent. That's, that's time I'm, I'm, I'm using to seek the kingdom of God. No, it goes beyond that. It's defined in our willingness to surrender our first. What does first mean? You look in the Old Testament about the importance of first. Seeking first. My first. It was, it was my first fruits. It was that which God said, you will hold back for me. That was first an Old Testament principle. God said to the, uh, to the children of Israel when they, when they came across the Jordan, they approached the, uh, Jericho. He said, you're not going to take anything. You're going to leave it. Those are mine. This is a tithe to me, if you would. I want to know that I am the most important thing. And Achan breached that, and he took that into his, his own tent and obviously paid the price for taking that which belonged to to the Lord. Judgment was also cast on Cain as Cain did not offer him that first fruit type. And, and God was unpleased and would not accept that sacrifice. And I'm telling you, the Old Testament mandate of the Lord, and it is even brought into the, the New Testament when we understand the importance of coming to the Lord. Jesus used mercy, but we understand this. And when he said seek first, he wasn't saying this is optional if you desire this. No, he was saying, I want you to surrender not only your time, but your willingness. I want you to surrender your willingness. Your, I, want, I want your first when you seek me. I want your first in my kingdom. And, 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 and we're going to have to stop here. But I'm telling you, the first, God is, is, is um, uh, he is... I, I, I'm trying to get the words here outright, but, but God is mandating his subjects to surrender not only first of their time, but what about their best? What about their abilities? I want, I want first of your ability. Think about that. Think about your talent. And I know the church today. I, I, I know the talent that runs very thick in this church, and, and we have a lot of talent, and I feel like God is, is going to start bringing things to the surface as we discover his kingdom, more about his kingdom. God is going to bring some of those things to the surface, and he's going to say, I want that. I want that first. Before you give your talent to your job, I want it. We, we have just begun to touch, and we're at that 30-minute marker right now. I'm not even halfway through. But for the, for the sake of, of, of only trying to spend 30 minutes with you on a Wednesday night, I'm going to put a pause right here, and we'll pick back up. I want you to remember that time, it is essential to spend time in the field. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I couldn't thank you enough for being faithful to the house of the Lord on Sunday. We will resume our in-house and online services this coming Sunday. 
Again, just as a reminder, we will put it on our social media. But if you're tuning in here and you're unaware of what times we actually meet in-house, we have a 10 a.m. service. And uh, we're going to meet and worship the Lord. And then we have a 12 noon service as well, all right? And that service at noon will be cast online. And uh, those that feel uh, safer being at home, please, please, please understand that we totally understand it. And uh, we're very thankful that you're still staying faithful and you're still connected to the body of Christ. I can't wait to see you again. I'm looking forward to seeing your faces once again. God bless you. I'll end it like I always end it because it's the truth. These three words, they're four on Sunday because Felix tells us it's four words, but they're three words on Wednesday. And those three words are this, hey, you matter. God bless you. We will see you this coming Sunday in Jesus' name.